Hey guys, welcome back to the Stop Buying Your Bee Series Part 5. Today what we're going to do is we're going to go back into this problem hive we've been having, see what's going on. They were trying to raise a queen, but the cells were dinky looking and we wasn't happy with them. Um, we've got some grass ready to pull out of this uh, colony on my right, your left. Um, and we're going to transfer those over to the incubator. Give this hive a look over this one and drop some more feed on them and possibly add another... Uh, super to this colony so stay tuned okay we're just gonna give them a little smoke at the entrance not a lot don't want to disturb them too much i, I want to see what's going on more than anything they've almost finished this jar of syrup they're eating fine which indicates the bees seem healthy but the problem is they're just they've been troubled since the get-go um, we found a emergency queen cell right coming out of winter I destroyed that cell. I don't want that in my genetics. And we've been trying to save it ever since by giving it frames of brood and eggs and larvae, but that they just don't want to seem to draw it out. So to remedy that, we raised some of our own cells to put in here and hopefully they'll accept one of our cells and we'll get this colony squared away. A few hive beetles up top, which is to be expected. There's no queen in this box. But I just want to look at it and see what's going on. See if they did manage to draw any cells out. And if they did, what they look like. Now, however, if they did draw any cells out, I'm going to leave them for a few days. But I'm going to come back and kill them and give them our own. That's just some pollen. Just a little hint of nectar in that frame. They've got that roar to them that indicates something's wrong. They, like a generally a queenless problem. And I've noticed they quit bringing in as much pollen. And that's a good indicator that you're not queen right because they have no reason to go forage for pollen if they're not raising any bees. That's a frame of stores. Nothing in the queen cells. No queen cells yet. And sometimes colonies just get so far off balance it's hard to get them started back. More nectar. Now there is a, there's a cell cup up here. Started. If he can zoom in. But there's nothing in it. That's an old cell. That's typical for bees. They, they draw them out in case they need them. So it's not out of the ordinary to see a few uh, cell cups drawn out on the frames. Nothing on this one. There's one. Okay, here is a cell they started. And it's got a larva in it. So that makes it, a, makes it an actual cell instead of a cup. It's right here. If you zoom down in there, you may can see the, the royal jelly and the larva in it. Not sure. But that's a cell that they've started. So we're going to leave it for the time being just to help thwart that uh, laying worker response. But we're definitely going to give them our, our cell from ourselves. And what we'll do in a couple days, we'll, when it's time to insert that cell, we'll kill that one and give them ours. Yeah, nothing to really speak of on this as far as queen cells being drawn out. I'm just looking for cells right now. I'm looking at the overall frames and see what they look like. Still no cells. Just that one cell that they had. 
This is a Framer brood that we have given them from another, the other colony beside of us just to keep their populations up. And the bees actually look good. There's just no, no laying queen in here. I think all I need to see with this colony here. So I'm just going to close it up and continue to feed them. Just like that. Okay, this is our queen right colony up top. We're raising our cells in the bottom here over a, a double screen board. And we've also got a feeder rim installed just to give them some feed right directly on top. Just gonna push those bees down in there a little bit. Just a little light smoke at the entrance. Little light smoke at this entrance because the entrance uh, of the queen right portion of this colony is on the back right now. I'm going to pop that loose. We're just going to set this over to the side real gentle. I'm going to check the top of the double screen board make sure I don't see my queen on here and she's not on, on the double screen board. I'm going to break this loose. And remember, I've got cells in there, so I don't want to bang the bees off of this double screen board into this colony here, because I don't want to jar those cells. Just a little smoke to get them off that sugar brick that we've got them on. We're going to set this over to the side for a minute and try not to kill any of our bees. And remove this feeder rim. see what we got I'm gonna take this last this end frame out I always like to take an end frame out first especially if I'm doing any delicate work and I'm worried about the queen or her cells or anything like that now this is our cell frame that we grafted onto and they should be capped today as you can see there's a lot of coverage on them they started drawing comb out on them, which is normal. That's okay. Nothing, nothing to be worried about with that. Get these bees off here. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Our five cells look good. So I'm just gonna get these bees off. And a lot of time you'll get cross comb and things like that in between your, your cells and that's real beekeeping ladies and gentlemen. They don't like you brushing them like this but that's okay. I'm going to work quickly. And I'm going to take these cells and I'm going to put them inside this nuke box just so they're safe and out of the way. Very gently, I'm going to set them in here, just like so. Well, I said I was. I'm going to take another frame out. It's a little tight with a feeder in there. I'm going to take these cells, and I'm just going to set them in here for the time being. It's pretty warm out. It's about 70 degrees. I don't want them out here too long. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this box and see if they've started drawing any other cells out, because I don't want them raising their own. No cells on that frame. No cells or larva, which is what I'm wanting. No cells or larva on that frame. Now I'm gonna come to this frame, I'm gonna scoot these over.
just pile in on this frame. There, now there's a started, that may be a hatch clean cell, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what we got. I'm not sure. It was open. Maybe it's when they started and chewed down or something. But we'll keep an eye on it. We'll come back and check. I don't see any uh, jelly in it, but it looked like uh, Queen had chewed out of it. But we'll know in a few days because we'll check it really well. I don't see a virgin crawling around. But they shouldn't have had time yet to, to raise a queen unless it's one we missed. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they've started a queen cell on it yet. I mean, they started it, but I don't think it... I think they tore it down, maybe, or... Or who knows, she may be in here. If she is, that's okay, too. We'll find out. We're still gonna give it a sale later on. And maybe the best queen win. But they do sound queenless. They don't they don't sound like a normal hive. And as you get experience with bees, you'll you'll learn to hear what that queenless roar sounds like. But either way, it's not an issue. It's a non-issue. Okay, everything looks good on this colony. close it back up and I'll come back later and I'll fill this in with another frame put my double screen board back on And I'll set this colony back on top. Okay guys, what we're going to do now, we're going to take these cells in, we're going to drop them in the incubator, and show you the process of that, so stay tuned. What we're going to do now is we're going to just trim these off. This is just wax. There's no cells in this part. Just a little bit of wax that they started drawing down to make comb with. Now this is our first cell right here. So I'm just taking my knife and I'm gonna go under it just like that and I'm gonna lift it off the cell bar and I'm gently gonna take it and place it in a cell protector. Just like so. Keep in mind today's the day, is day eight after the grafts. And that's when they seal off the cat, or cat the cells. And that's the day we prefer to put them in our incubator. And as you can see, they drew out every cell that we placed in there. They did that on the emergency response instead of the swarm response. If I can get that one. Cutting my hand off. There's another one. This one in a cell protector. This one here. Now this one's a little bigger, but that's okay. That's what you get a lot of times. If you see how wide that is, it's okay. You can squish it just a little, but be very gentle and place that down in a protector, just like so. 
Same with this one. Fill it off the cell bar frame. And that's our finished product. That'll be a queen in eight more days. All right, we'll show you the process of putting them in the incubator, so stay tuned. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've got our cells into the incubator. I don't know if you can see them in there. There's five cells inside. It's hard to get the camera to focus on through the clear plexiglass on top. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to give you a shot of the temperature either, but we've got it set at 93, and it's showing 93.0 right now. Uh, current temp's 92.5. That's because we just have had it open, and the humidity 65. You want an ideal, uh, just be around 93 degrees, and the humidity to be around 70 degrees. So that's the process of getting them out of the cell bar and into the incubator, and we'll take you along whenever we get ready to take these off or out of the incubator and put them inside our uh, our uh, queenless colonies and our splits. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, sorry about the bright light. It's just what time of day it is. Uh, we've taken our queen cells that we raised out of this bottom box here and we put them in our incubator. They all look good. They should be hatching in about eight days. So that's one split here that we know of. This will make a separate colony. This one may take it or may not. So in preparation of this not accepting a queen, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and take this top box off or, or, or open this top box rather. I know my queen's in here and I know she's laying and they've got brood and they're, they're, they're fixing to really take off. But I want to feed them just because we're going to get some rain and stuff. I'm going to pour a jar of feed in here. Just like that. I'm gonna close this up. And what I want to do is I want to take this super here that's already got drawn comb, and I want to put it on top just to give them extra room. I'm not worried about a queen excluder because I want my queen to come up top. I want her to be in this top box. I want the bees to start polishing these cells, getting her getting ready to lay, and then. We'll repeat the same process over. If I'm hoping it's making sense and you guys are following along. If not, leave it in the questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe because we're going to do a whole series of building these two into however many bees we can get. We're looking at 32, but that, a lot of variables can play into that. But with that in this second box up top, she's, when she fills this up, she's going to come up here and she's going to start working this box. Okay? Then this will be a single colony and this will be a single colony. This one will be queen right and it'll stay queen right. We'll just move it. This one, when she starts working it good, we'll find the queen, make sure she's in this bottom box, and we'll give this colony a sale like the other ones. So, guys, that's basically it. I want to keep feed on them this time of year. I want, I'm going to push these beads hard. I'm going to be throwing pollen supplement to them because they're going to have to have it to do what we want to do. And But we're going to turn what you see here today in front of you into as many beehives as possible. So we appreciate you watching part five. Uh, part 6 will be out soon, so stay tuned and happy beekeeping.